Crohn disease or Crohn's disease, sometimes with an S, is the topic. And uh, Crohn's disease essentially is a form of IBD, which is inflammatory bowel disease. And uh, there's two kinds, and Crohn's is one of them. And the other one, as many of you know, is ulcerative colitis. So this video is really about Crohn's disease. So I'm not going to talk about ulcerative colitis too much. But I will draw a really quick diagram to illustrate a very, very sort of fundamental difference between the two. Um, and this is basically the bowel. And this, this part here is the terminal ileum. And um, what comes afterwards, of course, is the large intestine. And ulcerative colitis, um, what happens is the inflammation is really continuous so it would be like all the way down to the, the rectum in contrast if in Crohn's disease it actually doesn't happen that way it happens in a segmental uh, way so I'll draw what happens there will be segments of the bowel that are inflamed and um, these segments have a special term and they're called skip lesions and you might wonder well, why is this area narrow here because also Crohn's disease which is this diagram here also has things called um, these these narrowing I hope I drew it well enough for you to see um, those areas of narrowing is something unique to uh, Crohn's disease and those are called strictures and they can lead to bowel obstruction so really quickly just wanted to give you that heads up about Crohn's so before I get into the signs and symptoms I just wanted to give a few sort of interesting or valuable uh, things that you need to know about Crohn's disease. The first thing is that the inflammation is transmural and what that means is that it's in the full thickness of the bowel. And that's very important to remember that's a key term on licensing exams. The second one that I already talked about is that there's stricture formation in, in addition to the inflammation. So inflammation is of course that's what it is, inflammation of the bowel but you also have the strictures. Another very key term is the skip lesions, which basically means that the inf inflammation is not continuous. It happens um, in sharply demarcated areas like I showed in the diagram. And one more thing I'd like to mention is that it can happen anywhere. It's not just located in the large intestine. It can happen, um, you know, the, the ileum like I showed in the diagram, um, it can happen really anywhere. Uh, colon. Um, it's not like an ulcerative colitis, which is sort of limited to the colon. Um, Crohn's can also occur in the small intestine as well. And I guess one more thing I'd like to mention is that Crohn's can lead to vitamin deficiencies, and they they like to test that. Uh, on the licensing exams. So which vitamins you ask? The two key ones are vitamin D and vitamin B12. The deficiencies that can happen with Crohn's. So now let's get into the symptoms. Chronic diarrhea, abdominal pain, um, fever. Um, patient can also have anorexia where they just don't feel like eating and there can be weight loss as well I'll put that up there um, and this can happen sort of in episodes it can come and go it'll be a chronic disease but it can be intermittent as well and it can come and go and when it comes um, those are known as flare-ups so the flare-ups are actually very very 
wor a worrisome part of the disease. And another thing that can happen, and I think I touched on this earlier, is because of the, the strictures, you can get obstruction. So, very important to remember that. So how do you diagnose this? There's three main ways. The most common one, of course, is the barium x-rays. For those of you who don't know, a barium x-ray basically is where the patient is given barium and the patient ingests it and then they take x-rays of the GI tract and that will show a very characteristic picture of what Crohn's disease looks like. So barium x-rays of the bowel, small intestine, large intestine. Another way to do it, and a little bit more expensive, is an abdominal CT and then a very common way of diagnosing anything in the gastrointestinal uh, system is your colonoscopy endoscopies so those are the tests involved in the, uh, the diagnosis of Crohn's treatment of Crohn's basically you have a first-line treatment and then you have a treatment of flare-ups the first-line treatment is a drug known as mesalamine and it's also sometimes called 5-ASA. Treatment of flare-ups is with steroids, and most commonly prednisone. And 70% of Crohn's disease patients will eventually need some sort of surgery. So that's pretty, pretty dramatic. So before I get into clinical vignettes, I would like to touch on some key points about Crohn's that you will most likely see on the licensing exams. So the first one is that it can happen anywhere. It can happen in the ileum, it can happen in the colon, um, and that's different than ulcerative colitis. Um, it usually does spare the rectum though. Spares rectum. The next point is that you have those skip lesions and I drew that in the diagram where there's these intermittent areas of bowel that are uh, affected and then there's normal areas and then another inflammation um, and those are called skip lesions or skip areas and then the symptoms they involve abdominal pain and diarrhea and then some of the more um, complications that include the strictures that I talked about because that can lead to obstruction um, the treatment involves the 5 ASA drug which is also known as mesalamine or prednisone for flare-ups and approximately 70 percent will need surgery resection of some kind so let's uh, take a look at some vignettes. A 24-year-old man presents with for evaluation of four-month history of postprandial diarrhea, a weight loss of nine pounds, lower abdominal pain. He denies recent travel or antibiotic use. On physical exam, temperature is about 100. He has several oral aphthous ulcers. On abdom abdominal exam, there is tenderness mild voluntary guarding in the right lower quadrant um, rectal exam reveals brown soft stool that is strongly GUAC positive which is the following most likely causing this patient's symptoms um, well I think it, it's a little a difficult question especially if you did not watch a video of Crohn's disease so let's go through this uh, most likely it will it is Crohn's disease. And why is that? Well, he's got the symptoms, right? Diarrhea, weight loss, ab abdominal pain. He's got a little bit of a fever. He's got this aptus ulcers, which uh, is one of the you know, things associated with Crohn's disease. He's got the abdominal tenderness and um, the right la lower quadrant uh, uh, guarding is referring to the ileum most likely because the terminal ileum is affected in Crohn's disease. Uh, quite a lot. The terminal ileum 
involve is about almost half the cases of Crohn's disease. So that's what that right lower quadrant tenderness is. So let's go through this. There's, they're asking what is most likely causing a gram negative organism. Well, gram negative organisms have nothing to do with Crohn's disease. Folate deficiency does not cause uh, Crohn's disease. Mucosal ulceration with no transmural involvement. Well, we all know that Crohn's disease involves the full thickness of the bowel. So that's transmural. So this is saying no transmural, so it's not that. Toxin-producing organism um, would not have all these symptoms. They would probably just have a watery diarrhea presentation. So by process of elimination, we get down to this. And it does make ter perfect sense because Crohn's disease is indeed transmural and it does involve the terminal ileum in majority of cases. The next one, 27 year old woman comes to the emergency, emergency department because of severe abdominal pain and diarrhea. She has not been feeling great for about a month and over the past few days, the pain has localized in her right lower quadrant. She is generally very healthy, exercises regularly, eats a fairly low fat diet, temperature is 99, blood pressure and pulse are normal, physical exam shows right lower quadrant tenderness, but no guarding or rebound. You have a funny feeling that this is not the run of the mill appendicitis. So you decide to order a small bowel series, which shows cobblestone appearance of the small intestinal mucosa. Colonoscopy is performed and multiple biopsies are taken. All the biopsies show transmural inflammation, granulomas, and fibrosis. She is admitted to the hospital and treated with mesalamine, metronidazole, and corticosteroids. At discharge, she asks you to be brutally honest about the long-term effects of her condition and most appropriate responses. Well, of all of these, uh, you know, you can pause the video and read them. The correct answer is A, and the reason is because Crohn's disease is chronic, it is intermittent, and 70% of the time will require surgery. And there definitely will be relapses and recurrences even after surgery. And uh, the rest of them, the rest of the answer choices are actually trying to confuse you by mixing in ulcerative colitis um, when they talk about things like colectomy. Um, so the correct answer for this is A. And then the last one, uh, there's one answer, there's two answer choices I didn't put in here. They didn't fit in. There's uh, mesalamine and there's prednisone. Okay, 48-year-old man presents with complaint of non-bloody diarrhea and right low quadrant pain, palpable mass and tenderness. He states that this flare-up is one of the worst he has ever experienced. Radiographic examination reveals evidence of ulceration, stricturing, and fistula development of the colon and small bowel. Which of the following drugs would be most useful for treating this patient? Well, the strictures pretty much give it away that it's Crohn's because you don't get strictures in ulcerative colitis. Now, this is a treatment of a flare-up that they're asking for, and flare-ups are treated with prednisone. Now, if it was just a initial uh, treatment, um, then it would be with mesalamine. But prednisone is the drug of choice for acute flare-ups, whereas mesalamine is given... Uh, for the treatment of um, mild to moderate uh, disease um, involving the colon in Crohn's disease, but uh, prednisone is for flare-ups. So prednisone is for flare-ups, and mesalamine is for mild to moderate first-line treatment. First-line treatment.